Okay, so I'm just going to make a quick video response to Time Magazine's Person of the Year. This, of course, is for 2015. Um, I really wanted to get my hands on this copy because it's always a always an edition I find interesting to read. Um, this year, well, 2015, it was the Person of the Year was named as Angela Merkel. Um, she's only the second woman, individual woman, to be named since Corazon of Aquino of the Philippines was named in 1986. So she's the first woman in 29 years to get that distinction. Um, I think it's important to point out that my perspective of Merkel as an outsider is not going to be exactly the same as German's perspective of Merkel internally, and I think that's true of any leader. Um, indeed, Britain's famous woman leader, Margaret Thatcher, is viewed in very different ways by the rest of the world as she is in Britain. In Britain, she's a deeply controversial figure, a divisive figure. She is loved by some, but she's hated by many as well. Across most of the rest of the world, Thatcher is widely respected, I would guess, by most people, with some exceptions, obviously Argentina um, and some other examples. Certainly she's not popular in Ireland. But um, the point I'm making is the way a leader is perceived is very often, especially in the case of democratic leaders, very often different from inside a country to outside. So there's a lengthy article here. I haven't even read all of it yet um, about Merkel's rise from a shy girl in East Germany to being the most powerful woman in the world. And uh, not only the most powerful woman in the world, I would argue she is arguably the dominant democratic figure in the world. In fact, the caption underneath reads, Angela Merkel, Chancellor of the Free World. Um, I, I more or less agree with Time's decision here to name her as Person of the Year, and I don't always agree with their decision. Um, in recent years, they've had a tendency to name groups. For example, last year was the Ebola Fighters. Now, that's not to take anything away from what the Ebola Fighters are doing, but I think if you're going to have... Uh, a title, person of the year, it should be a person. It shouldn't be an object, it shouldn't be a group, it should be a person. Um, you know, I have no problem with them having a separate category of group of the year or company of the year or whatever. Um, so I hope they are consistent with this. The runners-up, uh, just go through them quickly. Uh, number two was Abu Bakr al-Baghdadi. Um, he's a very elusive figure, but a very dominant figure simply for being universally despised as a leader of ISIS. Number three, Donald Trump, again, controversial figure. But so far, Trump's influence, I would argue, is still restricted to the US unless he becomes president. Um, number four, Black Lives Matter. Number five, Hassan Rouhani, Iranian president. Number six, Travis Kalanick. He's hardly a household name. Uh, I'm just checking. Mr. Kalanick is I'm guessing he's a CEO or an entrepreneur. Um, yep, the Uber founder, that's it. Um, you know, quite often time shortlists. Caitlyn Jenner, number seven. Um, and that's, well, transgender issues is obviously one of the dominant social issues of 2015. Um, but yeah, I, I more or less go along with Angela Merkel. Not only is she the dominant leader and the de facto president of the European Union, uh, not only is she the most powerful woman in the world, she's also the senior G7 leader, having been chancellor since 2005. Just to put that in context, Cameron came in in 2010, Hollande 2012, Obama 2009, um, Harper's now out of office. Uh, so looking at other G7 leaders, she is definitely the senior leader. Uh, I know there I say G7, not G8, because of obviously the rifts with Russia. Merkel's relationships with Russia are interesting, because on one hand she's managed to stand up for Western liberal democracy. On the other hand, she hasn't been quite as confrontational with Putin as other Western leaders have been. And of course, Germany is strategically important there. It's a Western country, but has very close relations with Russia. Also, her upbringing as a girl from East Germany, I think, plays a big factor in that. Um, to say that she's Germany's Thatcher isn't quite accurate. 
It's true that they're both conservatives. It's true that she comes from a chemistry background, a science background, as Thatcher did. But I think the personality is very different. Thatcher was very confrontational, loved arguments. Um, Merkel comes across more as she is a stern figure, a headmistress type figure, but not like Thatcher. One thing that stands out, and they did feature in the article, um, and this is a real testament to Merkel's operator. Some say it would be, some say it's cold, others say realistic. That is when the young Palestinian refugee girl basically made an emotional plea to Merkel about staying in Germany. Now, as the article points out, Merkel could have taken an easy way out with that and just said, oh, well, promise to get someone to look into your family's case. But instead, she just went for real politic. She said, look, politics is difficult. We simply cannot help everyone. Um, and I think that showed strong leadership because she didn't take the easy way out. Now, the good news is the little girl's family has managed to stay in Germany, so that's a happy ending to that. But at the time, Merkel was, you know, that's an example of a leader being really, really under the radar. Um, Merkel, my impression is Germans are a little bit tired of the the compassion that Merkel has shown to the refugee crisis. And I think there's a bit more to it than Germans being very kind hearted, although that's certainly there. I think, you know, every country clearly has their own motivations as well. But in the case of Germany, they recognise that all those refugees are good for helping out in car plants and so on. Um, Merkel's response to the refugee crisis has been based on humanitarianism, and I think that's something Germany has been very focused on ever since World War II. Uh, I'm going to round this up soon, but I think it's well deserved. I think she's a very dominant figure, and I think she has definitely earned the accolade of Person of the Year. Who it's going to be for 2016 will be interesting to see. I don't think it will be this lady, um, Brazil's president, Dilma Rousseff, probably the second most powerful woman in the world. She seems to be under a lot of pressure right now. Um, we have a Brazilian guest right now, so it'll be interesting to see if she's got any views on that. Anyway, I'll leave it there. That is Time Magazine Person of the Year 2015, Angela Merkel.